a professor of learning and teaching and head of learning and teaching here at uh, Solent. And I'm delighted to um, see you all here this morning to hear about our Transformation Academy uh, project. Next slide, please. So here we are, the three of us who are going to be talking this morning. Um, there's not just the three of us in Solent Learning Teaching Institute, that's SLTI. Um, we are a, a larger team which supports the university in its goal of providing an excellent student learning experience. And we're helping staff to um, de develop the delivery of innovative, uh, inclusive and stimulating teaching. Um, as a result, we, what we our overall aim is to ensure that our graduates maximise their educational potential and head out into the careers with uh, confidence. Next slide, please. So what I would like to talk about um, today is the work that we did at Solent University in um, setting up the Transformation Academy. And really, that was our response to deliver online learning that maintains our high standards. So we had an initial um, response to COVID-19 where we um, actioned a number of measures to allow our staff and our students to continue uh, to the end of the semester um, with their learning and teaching online. And then what we realised is that we needed to have a much more long term um, approach to being able to deliver our learning and teaching into the next academic year. So what the TA did was it recognised that colleagues worked at speed to transition their teaching and assessment from face to face to online during the final weeks of term in response to the pandemic situation. And student feedback on that was extremely positive and we recognised uh, that they appreciated our efforts and everything that we did um, in order to support them. But the, the kind of response that we had initially was not sustainable. And so we had to think about more longer term, um, uh, long, a longer term approach, which would be more compatible with our commitment to uh, an excellent student experience for all. What we also did was recognise that course wide and university wide services and experiences may also be limited um, from this September and that we would need to weave these into the online experience for students. And also we knew that confidence in online teaching was uneven across uh, the university. And so the transition would only be successful if academic colleagues were supported to develop their skills and share their experiences. And so essentially what the TA did was provide a structure to, um, uh, based on uh, design principles, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, um, a number of um, uh, new resources in place to support staff in this transition to um, online delivery and a number of support routes uh, to help uh, uh, staff with uh, different areas of that activity. Next slide, please. So we started with a number of design principles. Could you just reveal all of that, please, Hannah? We started with a number of design principles called the iceberg model, the iceberg principles, and they were a starting point for us and really guided our process from the start. And the iceberg principles have been developed in many higher education contexts now and um, been uh, used uh, to a great extent, for example, uh, um, within the Open University model. And what we wanted to do was to adapt those um, through the Transformation Academy and emphasise some things which are of uh, significant importance to us at Solent, such as inclusivity, diversity and accessibility. So those were very much our starting point. You know, what's important to um, to kind of uh, convey this morning, and uh, Karina and Roger will touch more on this as well, is that this is the, we didn't start from, um, from scratch um, when we uh, began the Transformation Academy project. We've had something called a sole baseline for a number of years at um, Solent, long before I arrived. And what we were doing is building on what we already had and moving that uh, forward. So what we, the, the, we moved from the sole baseline to what we call the sole standard. And this was created, um, that what this did was create a number of resources to um, upgrade our course level template for our, for our um, VLE, um, Solon Online Learning. And this course template was used um, for all courses, ensuring that students could navigate from module to module on the course um, with the same look and feel accompanied by rich, immersive, student-centered module pages using another upgraded template. So the aim here was consistency, so that students you know, embarking on a number of modules for their course would have the same kind of look and feel across all of them. 
Now, the main thing to bear in mind with the Transformation Academy project is the scale. I mean, we've done an enormous amount of work in a 12 week project, essentially, and that roughly came to um, 237 courses and over a thousand modules that we have uh, worked with. We also instigated a number of other elements to uh, support us in this work. One of these was to create a, um, a forum called Transformation Academy Champions. And these were members of staff that we um, kind of recruited, I suppose, across the um, student learning community um, to build a community of practice of people who were already confident about working online and were keen to share their experiences and ideas and support others either through the discussion board or through um, the building of exemplars, um, example templates, um, or um, to um, help build the confidence of others. We also are at Solon are committed to working with students as partners and so we appointed a student inclusive curriculum coordinator to work with six inclusive curriculum consultants. So they are either undergraduates or uh, postgraduate students that, that are currently studying at uh, Solon. And they were uh, appointed to ensure that the, there was a strong student representation in all of the Transformation Academy work and they remain with us because the Transformation Academy continues. The Students' Union were also um, incredibly um, heavily involved in helping us to co-create the, um, the course and module templates. In conjunction with um, those members of staff, the champions and the students, we had lots of uh, different groups of, um, of uh, stakeholder groups who were uh, significant to the project, ranging from school strategic leads for learning and teaching, who advocated for the TA, um, and also um, at uh, higher levels, the deputy vice chancellor, the dean, the pro vice chancellor, um, all kind of helped to prioritise this project um, through these months. In total, then, we had over 75 members of staff working on this project so that we don't have 75 members of staff usually in SLTI. We're a, a fairly small uh, central service supporting the university. But the idea was to bring a number of members of staff from across professional services and other teams, redeploy them towards the Transformation Academy project to allow this, um, this work to go ahead. And we divided them effectively up into teams to support different aspects of the work. And, you know, it's been a huge collaborative um, effort to ensure that um, students arriving or returning with us this month have an outstanding experience, whether they're learning wholly online, mainly online or partially online. And now I'm going to hand over to my uh, colleague, Dr. Karina uh, Buckley, who is the Instructional Design Manager, who's going to talk to you about some of the other learning and teaching elements of the Transformation Academy. Thanks, Karen. <clears throat> so um, I'm glad to be here and thank you to Hannah for convening this. Um, so we can move on and talk about the educational aspect of the Transformation Academy, the learning and teaching. So thank you, Hannah, if you could uh, nudge us on. We... <laughs> We wanted to keep students at the centre of what we do and doing that has been critical in the direction that we took with the Transformation Academy. Um, our priority overall was to maintain our standards, uh, not just in teaching uh, as we had been, but also to ensure we maintained our standards in inclusivity and equity. Uh, at Solent, um, so social justice is a huge part of who we are and that means everybody has the opportunity to reach their potential and by developing and implementing the Transformation Academy process we hope to ensure that all students would have a consistent and excellent learning experience with a quality of access albeit a very different one from what they had been used to or were expecting. Uh, thanks, Hannah. Next one. Um, Karen mentioned the sole baseline. Um, we'd already made significant price progress uh, in this area through the introduction of the sole baseline in 2016. Um, and this opened up the potential uh, for each module to become a site for a collaborative learning community. Uh, and the, the idea that I was picturing was a networked web of modules uh, encompassing a whole course or even a whole programme. 
Um, and the goal of that was to extend the classroom beyond the physical space and to help both staff and students see the VLE as a learning space that had as much value as their standard physical spaces. And this in turn didn't come out of uh, nothing either, um, that it was very much built on uh, what we already had. Um, we'd already provided guidance on how to use Moodle uh, since its introduction in 2006. And we required things like reading lists uh, to go on every module page, uh, all the assessment documents, uh, a module descriptor, teaching scheme, teaching materials and contact details. Um, so that was already there, although um, to a greater or lesser extent um, achieved in practice. Um, but what the cell baseline did is to start to shift the focus away from the items that needed to be included towards how those items could actually be used, especially the teaching materials, which um, all too often were uh, a series of PowerPoints or Word documents or PDFs, which are themselves valuable, but not useful in terms of seeing the VLE as a teaching space. So what the Soul Baseline did was prioritize communication and community. Um, we wanted to have course content that was in context um, and framed by a narrative. We wanted to provide opportunities for students to work together and also opportunities for students to work independently and have the chance to monitor their own progress. And the ultimate goal of all of this uh, was to provide a rich, immersive and interactive learning experience that reached beyond the classroom and which focused on what the students were learning and how, rather than necessarily where. So the sole baseline therefore moved the direction of the VLE towards the relationships and interactions between tutor and student and between peers. And it became engaged as a tool uh, for challenging and changing the learning and teaching culture across the university. Uh, I was new in my role at that point as instructional design manager, and I was ambitious, as you might imagine. Um, thanks, Hannah. Next one. Um, as with all change, uh, progress was patchy, um, but we retained this ambition for all students on all courses and progress did start to be made over the past few years. However, last year, uh, I did start to think about whether this would be enough for courses where the balance of interaction shifted away from face to face and towards online. There was a sense in the university that um, more online learning would be um, valuable. It was the direction we were heading in. Um, so I modified um, the baseline. We've got this newly modified model. Um, it was originally conceptualized as being for fully online courses, but it now instead uh, fully replaces the sole baseline in totality and it becomes the standard way of teaching for all courses. So this is very much about the sustainability of the Transformation Academy. We don't just want to say for now, we want courses that are achieving these iceberg principles. We want these courses to be teaching in this way all the time, whether they are on campus, online or somewhere in between. And all of these ideas uh, that you see now in this enhanced diagram are incorporated in the Transformation Academy and they build firmly on what's gone before. Uh, we now explicitly highlight things like accessible design, um, scheduled interactivity, uh, formative deadlines, peer learning, um, everything else is an established part of the teaching and learning culture. Uh, in fact, those things that I just mentioned were too. Uh, we're just now flagging them up um, very explicitly to ensure that all students are able to track their progress. Uh, they can feel part of a community. They can access a varied range of learning resources in what have been trying and unusual circumstances. Um, next slide, please, Hannah. Thank you. Um, I put in a picture of the campus more for nostalgia than anything, <laughs> quite like that one. Um, 
but we are focusing on the student experience. It's nice to see students together learning, and that's what's at the heart of the Transformation Academy. Um, one of the dangers we realised quite early on with the transition to online teaching was that the face-to-face -face sessions would be directly transferred online. So instead of a class, there'd be a video conference with an hour of PowerPoint. Or some staff asked us about the best way to record their 45-minute lecture for students to watch at home and then wondered what they would do with the students in their seminar. Would they go through the lecture again? And that was the very last thing we wanted. Uh, instead, we saw this as an opportunity to rethink how we do learning and teaching. So we guided colleagues away from the idea of a PowerPoint as a teaching resource to them and their students themselves being the teaching and learning resource. In other words, we took the social constructivist principles that are familiar from the classroom and we showed staff how to do the same thing online because it wasn't a natural transition for everybody. Although, to our staff's credit, most of them were very keen uh, to give it a go. Um, we wanted them to think differently, uh, to reimagine how their content could be presented, um, rather than thinking in terms of lectures. So we put the instructional design team at the disposal of any staff who needed help or ideas in creating activities or how to uh, structure or present their content. And we foregrounded the need to guide students through a module that, to a large degree, they would be navigating alone. Uh, we encouraged staff to think about how students would encounter their resources and materials, how they could be put into context to ensure they made sense, uh, signposting connections to other modules and topics, and making it absolutely clear how this piece of learning fitted in to the bigger picture. We also guided them into thinking how students could be actively engaged with the learning materials and with each other. So we specifically asked staff to provide opportunities for students to collaborate and to see themselves as facilitators rather than the holders and distributors of knowledge. Some people, as I said, the majority embraced the challenge. A few others have struggled, but all have worked to the same guiding principles, which are, in effect, that a collection of online resources is not a learning experience, and social constructivist principles apply just as much to online delivery as they do to the classroom. So at its heart, the Transformation Academy was about the people. And that is where I will hand over to my colleague, Roger Emery. Hi. Um, OK, Roger Emery speaking now. I'm um, head of learning technologies. Um, hopefully my camera and everything is working and you can all hear me. Um, the um, technology element, now just to echo exactly as Karina said, it's not actually about the technology. It's about the people and how we support the people using this technology. So uh, I'm going to return back to March when the um, campus closed and we found our campus was no longer a physical space but a digital space. Um, so the first thing we did um, supporting people with this technology and, and the very much sort of instant emergency sort of response we had to do, we put together um, a virtual help desk um, which was run through Zoom. Um, so the Next slide, please, Hannah. Um, the, the, this is the, the help desk team. Um, so they set up a virtual help desk. It's been extremely popular. We found the support um, was up, calls were up about 30% um, year on year. So there was a lot of people quite anxious. Um, how were they going to teach their students? And as a lot of students, how am I going to learn? Um, there was a, a, a fair amount of digital upskilling. Um, people were using software they'd not used before. Um, some people were struggling with home hardware that wasn't up to the job. Um, our colleagues in ICT also um, provided a lot of support for staff particularly, um, getting them um, sort of provided with the right software and hardware. Um, in amongst all of this, we'd already had um, customer service excellence inspection and audit was due and already booked in, so that happened nonetheless, and we got very many positive comments. Um, we'll await the outcome of their, uh, of their sort of findings, but um, we got a lot of positive comments and a lot of positive thanks from students, especially 
simply knowing someone was there to help. Um, we were there, they could see somebody, they could talk to someone, we could take over their desktop and fix things for them. Um, alongside this, um, the various teams um, provided a number of new support sites. So um, the one that's on the screen is uh, Learning Technologies Induction. We, um, we've, we've upped that to very much be about the online experience rather than the physical space. Um, and, and that's the same for this September and October. Um, we built a site called Learning at a Distance, which was specifically for students that were learning at a distance for the first time. Um, there were many students who have not done this before. Um, this also helped them through the um, incoming through the spring assessment and uh, exam period. Um, as uh, Karen had mentioned, we built a site initially called Online Delivery for Staff, but that soon turned into the Transformation Academy website. Um, it's got an extremely active discussion forum on there, lots and lots of information for staff and guidance, walkthroughs, etc. So we built um, for both staff and students, you know, new support materials, sites and places to go and communities um, to, to, to be part of um, at a very short notice and have continued to develop them over the summer um, and, and meeting people's needs as they arise. Um, alongside this, there was the corporate, as I'd say, corporate COVID site um, with all the guidance from the, on our external WW site. So we really much, you know, first thing we focused on was supporting the people um, as they grappled with this new situation and new technology. Um, Hannah, could I have the next slide, please? Um, so the first thing that, that uh, other than continuing teaching and getting through the last three, four, five weeks of teaching, um, one thing that was coming up was assessments, um, really quite a challenge. Um, what we did there is um, for uh, the normal assessments, as in uh, pieces of work to be handed in, um, we extended deadlines by uh, between two and four weeks, depending on the course and the level. Um, so we instantly gave everybody extensions um, so they had more time to do the work. Um, our exams as well, um, we moved them from whatever they were, two hour, three hour SAT exams. We moved them as far as possible to 24 hour um, exams where the students were expected to take that two or three hour period any time in the 24 hours that supported them. Um, so the reason for doing that was to, for both the extension on the assessments and the um, change of the exams, was to give people more time to prepare, ensure they had the technology, the access, and also for students that needed additional support from the Access Solent services, um, that they were, um, you know, provisioned with the support they needed and, and able to um, take part in their assessment. Um, we uploaded um, all the exam papers onto our VLE with various time and date restrictions. Um, we had you know, limited opening submission boxes. Um, we also provided um, uh, um, extenuating circumstances and individual extensions where applicable. Um, we were strangely and unexpectedly prepared for this in some ways because over the last two or three years we've um, carried out quite a, a major electronic management assessment project, an EMA project, um, locally sort of known as Mark's Upload, where we've really tried to digitise all of the administration, particularly, um, you know, the uploading, the uh, marking, the grading of assessments. So we had quite a lot of tools um, at our disposal to allow this to happen at quite short notice. Um, so um, as far as uh, ensuring the students had equity of um, opportunity there, um, our colleagues in um, student um, experience also arranged additional bursaries for those needing additional equipment. Um, we worked closely with ICT um, and our, our support services um, around um, software licenses so that I know a lot of suppliers provided free or extended or, or some sort of additional software licensing and not just the general stuff um, like, like for instance Adobe that a lot of our students use but um, the specialist stuff for accessibility, um, screen reader software etc etc so there was a lot of companies that were quite generous and extended licenses for home use which was um, which was very helpful. So, so that helped us ensure students were prepared. Um, for the exam period and the assessments, we, we ran our virtual help desk um, on extended hours and across weekends. You know, there were students starting exams, for instance, on 12 on a Friday. They could then take that exam either through the Friday, th Friday evening or at least have all afternoon to prepare and contact us for help. 
um, and then have the rest of the time, the 24 hours, to conduct their exam. And then they could upload their papers um, the following day. So again, we were going 12 midday to 12 midday. So they had the next morning to again contact support if they're having difficulties uploading uh, and submitting their work. Um, Broadly, it went very very smoothly, actually. People did have issues. We tried to resolve them the best we could. We gave people extensions where there was genuine issues. Um, but, but broadly, the assessment period um, went very well and the exams went very well. Um, and then we did it all again for resits recently, last week of August, first week of September, um, we had resits again. So similar arrangements were done then for students with uh, assessment. So although it's not particularly um, focusing on the technology, it's very much on users' use of technology to conduct their assessments. Uh, next slide please, Hannah. Um, so I mentioned um, Zoom. We run our help desk through Zoom initially and we, you know, getting to the technology, we adopted um, Zoom at very short notice, bought a bunch of licenses, integrated it with our um, VLE so it was easy to use. Um, and that was our initial um, stopgap video um, meeting area. Um, we've actually got another project we had ongoing at the time to introduce Microsoft Teams. So my um, colleagues in ICT then worked extremely hard to get Teams out the door um, much faster than expected. So they, they did a very accelerated project then. Um, got Teams out for what I'd say was sort of business use, you know, so people staff could have meetings and so on very quickly. And we're rolling Teams out as we speak now for teaching purposes. So again, integration with our VLE, um, Teams place for every module um, and, and pushing that out. And that's, that's rolling out right now. And just to be clear for people um, around the sector, our general starter term is, is uh, for teaching is going to be the... Um, a couple of weeks later than normal. So, we, you know, we're Freshers' Week next week, uh, teaching the week after, and then 4th of October for returning students. So we, um, we're we rolling out teams. So in amongst all the uh, the chaos, as it were, we rolled out two new pieces of technology, um, two staff and students. <clears throat> if I go to the next slide, please, Hannah. Um, so actually, although it's about um, people, it is also about the technology and the infrastructure. Um, we've had a VLE at Solent for about 20 years. Um, we've had Moodle since about 2006, six, seven, as Karina mentioned. Um, but actually, we've got a lot more than that. It's, Moodle isn't our VLE. Our VLE is Moodle and Mahara and Panopto and Turnitin and Mintimeter and Medial and Adobe Connect and Box of Broadcast and LinkedIn Learning and various in-house customizations and plugins that we've built locally and also Zoom and Teams now. So it's a huge sort of portfolio of, um, of pieces of technology, a lot of things for people to grapple with, a lot of support to give people, um, and, and, and many of our staff and students haven't used the full range of it in their teaching because they may have been, you know, mainly on campus, mainly face-to-face. -face. We do teach a lot of very practical subjects which involve workshops or um, uh, uh, studios, labs, gyms, etc., where there's a lot of hands-on practical type subjects. Um, but what we have done for our infrastructure, um, and, and Moodle particularly, is, is in-house hosted on our own infrastructure. So for the techies, we've, um, our colleagues in ICT have built um, a, a new infrastructure from scratch over the summer for that. It's given us approximately tenfold um, increase in capacity in testing, um, and that's coming online now. So again, we're going to be you know, ready for the start of term um, with a robust and um, and performing system. Um, so we've we've done quite a lot in the back room, as it were, to uh, get all this ready. Uh, next slide, please, Anna. So equally, as I mentioned, getting to technology. Um, Part of the um, Transformation Academy um, requirement, we asked lecturers to record um, a video of introduction to their module, introduction to their courses, um, all of their assessment briefs, um, it, you know, recorded in plain English. Um, and also beyond that, for depending on the subjects, we've gone further into um, uh, you know walkthroughs of equipment and so on and so forth, where there may be 
uh, not the, the opportunity for safe socially distanced viewing of equipment, whatever that is, whether it's a lathe in engineering or a piece of sports equipment or medical equipment in our nursing area. Um, so, so the um, specialist facilities team um, built a studio, made it socially distanced and safe. There's uh, the picture on screen now. I've had to block out for privacy the person who sat on the chair, but um, you can see that the people could go into a, um, a studio space um, they could pre-submit their script and record safely at a distance um, their introductions and their assessment briefs in a studio situation. This was all directly uploaded to Panopto by the technicians that were running this and um, then made available on VLE. Um, so that was that was what we did for staff that didn't have the equipment at home, didn't have a quiet space to record something, didn't have a webcam, etc. Those that were able to come into campus could, they didn't have to learn how to do it. Um, we also, um, in that same building, had some classrooms opened up, which were kitted out like normal classrooms, but with additional higher quality cameras and microphones, um, which meant they could do other presentations and walkthroughs and talkthroughs of, of things that they needed to cover um, in, in the classroom situation. And again, had to make it clean and, and COVID safe. Um, and then on, on top of that, as I mentioned, the specialist facilities team um, have gone out and they've um, gone out to the labs and to studios and workshops and done local filming of um, uh, equipment and walkthroughs by the teaching staff to, you know, so students could familiarise themselves with uh, equipment before they accessed campus for those that are coming on campus. Um, in addition to that, we've um, we've lent out a number of mobile lecture capture kits, um, which is basically an iPod, um, sorry, an iPad mini on a tripod um, and those have been um, you know used in various spaces for instance we set some up in engineering so the um, the, the iPads could effectively be close-up cameras um, onto lathes so students could then see on the big screen in the um, in, in a you know in a workshop in an oily workshop where they'd normally stand around something a bigger uh, monitor was put in the iPad was used as a close-up camera and the recording device so that was then also up onto the Nocto so uh, students could access it remotely. So it gave us the opportunity for staff to teach as, as normally as they could where they are in a face-to-face -face situation, um, but also in a, in a COVID safe manner. Um, next slide, please, uh, Hannah. So the challenges, we've had many challenges um, <laughs> over the summer, and I'm sure there's more to come. Um, building a mass digital university at high speed um, is not an easy thing to do um, at very short notice. Um, we've put in the remote support, um, but we still have challenges with, with digital capabilities. Um, tr trying to teach staff and students at a distance is always really difficult. Um, it's often a lot easier from our experience to be in the same room as somebody pointing at that button on the keyboard they need to press or leaning over a shoulder. It's something we can't do now. So we've, we've worked really hard at trying to provide the remote support um, to people, but it's still a challenge to do that. Um, you know, getting the right technology to the students and staff, um, that's both the hardware and the software. Our colleagues in ICT have worked really hard to get laptops out to people and various other equipment out to staff. Um, who are working remotely, there are still challenges there where people have got, um, you know, intermittent internet connections um, and so on. And and the other challenge we found is um, staff, our staff particularly that live maybe in a shared house or they're in a bed set or they just don't have the space um, to bring home, you know, big monitors and all sorts of other equipment. They simply don't have the working space um to do that so again another challenge where some staff ha are having to come onto campus um, to do their work or other arrangements having to be made um, another thing that hit us in the summer is the the us eu privacy shield um, there's a ruling about that um, we can't just use free software we have to be aware of gdpr about security and privacy and it's very tempting for you know all of us, um, particularly teaching staff, to see a useful looking free tool and use it. And we have to be you know, very wary that we can't just use free tools. There are implications there um, of what's happening with the student data. It's considered university data if we're advising students to use these tools. So that's something that you know, we've, we've had to um, 
you know um, advise people on and and be very aware of because we you know it, it's a temptation there but these free tools aren't free um, they, they do come at a cost usually our data um, so that's something else that we've been challenged with and also the costs of home licensing so for instance Adobe you know provided Creative Cloud home licenses for free for a short period up to the middle of August, but now they've withdrawn that. There's other library resources and other software resources that were free for a while, they've now been withdrawn. Um, working out how we budget for that, how we pay for it, um, and even if we could give, you know, buy all the licenses for all the software for all the people, um, have the students at home got hardware, have they got laptops that will run that? Um, you know, anecdotally I've heard of cases where students are writing essays on iPads and even one that dictated his into a phone. Um, and called our help desk to ask how he copied that into Microsoft Word. So there's all sorts going on out there that are really difficult to um, support. So, you know, making sure staff and students have an equity of, of access is continuing and will be a continuing challenge. Um, another challenge is getting staff and students to the right technology. We've got various, as I mentioned, on-site specialist facilities that simply can't be um, put out. We've got nursing wards, we've got um, nutrition labs, biomedical labs, we've got a gym, we've got engineering workshops. There's things that simply aren't mobile that you couldn't set up at home. Um, so again, specialist facilities and the estates team have worked extremely hard to get s students onto campus um, in safe um, environments with various spacing, with screens, with all sorts of other arrangements toward, in order to get the people to the equipment they need to use for their learning. And also timetabling wise, we've done a lot of back end work, moving things around, moving groups around, you know, trying to trying to make it all work. Um, at the same time, as Karina mentioned, um, meeting accessibility regulations and guidelines, ensuring the equity, equity of access um, to learning. That's another challenge. Um, it's very easy to people to put something up online quickly because it looks handy and forget that it might not be accessible. Um, and um, again, we've worked very closely with Access Solon, our accessibility um, to access team, um, to uh, support that and uh, and ensure that um, as far as possible, we are ensuring that students have equal access to their learning materials. Um, we've put on automatic, again, for the more techie people, we've put on automatic captions in both Nocto and in uh, Teams recordings, which go into stream. Um, so they're automatically captions, but again, we need to make sure that uh, those captions are accurate, um, convey the correct message, especially if there's a lot of technical terminology. Um, so again, it's been embedded in our guidelines. We're not saying um, in various places, make sure you meet accessibility guidelines. We're stating, please make sure your message is getting across to the students, and then here's some guidance on how to do that. And we're trying to embed it in the um, in the process itself. So, uh, last slide, please, uh, Hannah. Um, it says, let the term begin. It's not all it's not all bad challenges. We're nearly there. Um, it's been a monumental effort by all staff, academic staff, support services staff, and management across the university. Um, everybody's worked really hard all summer and spring to um, get us ready for the start of term and we've also been very much supported by our student tuning and a good number of students too who've helped us um, in various ways consulting us doing work with us etc etc um, as I mentioned earlier we've had you know on the technology front we've had VLE guidelines minimum requirements for, for 15 years or so um, but this work has looked way beyond the minimum um, to deliver the best possible learning experience um, for our students. Um, so where our online provision was broadly in addition to the campus of the provision, um, we've now very much moved to the online being the primary access point for the learning in the coming term. Um, it has been a huge shift, it's been a huge project, but we need to be you know, ready.